certain stories have dominated our stages for 250 years we've not had that long mm. and therefore I don't feel like we're playing catch up in a weird way but I feel like we need to like level up now but in the misery you will find joy so funny because I'm talking about this with another friend who's finding it on her project at the moment and by holding on to the joy, the misery will never win. Nice. And she said that as well, and I was like, that always stayed with me. And in order to continue to hope, you need that joy. You need the polarity in order to, to really withstand anything that's gonna be the polar opposite of what joy can be. My yoga training taught me so much about the, the organic breath and how bhavan is the start of everything, like hava, this air is the start of everything. We start with breath, we finish with breath. And it just taught me so much about the body and how to understand your central nervous system, um, your endocrine system, everything that you need to try and bring some sort of equilibrium to the body. Hello everyone and welcome to Chai with Rai, a life and culture podcast diving into the mindset and business of being a creative. Hi, I'm your host Rai and each week I bring you a guest or a fruitful message from the creative industry all while sipping and spilling some hot chai. Now if you haven't done so, make sure to subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. If you love this podcast and are listening to this on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Audible or wherever you are streaming this podcast from, if you could do me a kind favor and make sure to rate the podcast down below and share on your stories on social and spread the word tag us it organically grows the show and connects us with listeners who haven't tuned in before and overall as i always say it just shares the love also if you haven't done so already you can now become a patron aka a supporter of chai with rye by signing up on patreon for five pounds or as i love saying it in this accent five dollars and fifty cents each month your subscription will help support the show but also get you exclusive behind the scene footages and some extra juicy things i will put the link for the patreon channel as well as anything else mentioned in the episode in the description so make sure to check that out but without further ado let's warm up our delicious cup of spears let me know what you're sipping on as you stream this episode what you are doing where are you doing recently i got a message that somebody was shopping and they were streaming this which was a delicious story i won't tell you what they were shopping for but let me know what you are doing as you stream this episode and let's dive into the final part of my chat with the one and only actor and voice and dialect coach gurkin and Kaur. Did you know that your I, you know how you're talking about British South Asian work? Mm. Did you know that once you got introduced to it, that that was going to be the work that you were going to be doing in the capacity that you're doing it today in? And then also, I'm just going to throw the question out there as opposed to like a direct question. Your thoughts on the culture of British South Asian work today and possibly what they could be less of and more of. Okay. That's <laughs> so did I not be into this niche? Um, and does that some? Wait, let's just stick to that. So you're in this sort of space right now, right? Yeah. Or POC work, because yeah. or global majority work. And does that then also weigh heavy that you have to stick to this niche, or you can also go beyond the parameters of that? And you're like, mm. no, I do want to do that. Or you're like, no, actually, I'm fine here. Mm. I'm just gonna go job by job. Yeah, so. I mean, before like I'd get asked during the masters, like, are you gonna specialize in accents and dialects or voice? And I was like, both. Yeah. Because my yogic training informs my voice work, and the way I coach voice is very inclusive, and it's it's progressively getting inclusive the more I do it because then I learn more from new participants and new actors, and I do dialects too. And I mean, you've really like gave me a thrashing with my with my highly skilled accents, but. You know, that's I've, gonna be the highlight reel. Yeah, I mean, the first time I did my own my own accent was in 2020, when the director came over. We were After back all to, those years. Yeah, we the director came over. I was dressed to the nines as a girl from as a lady from uh, Hounslow, oi, oi. and but with a proper like shalwar kameez and everything, and dressed to the nines like. And I auditioned with an act with an accent, got the job, and he came over. He was like in his American accent. The director, can you just do your own accent? Um, I love that. Can I just favorite, love uh, that? <laughs> because I'd never done it. I'd never done it. So when I did the Masters in Voice, it was because I realised no one ever coached me before yeah. or knew how to. But I also knew I could do all these other accents because I, I would do these uh, rural tours where the, like one job, like every new city we went to, we had to change our accent to, to shift in that city, which is really fun. That is fun. But it was stressful because you have native people going 
I can't remember the name Runcorn and, and I was like, oh, thank God they bought that. And then the more I like studied the accent and Dalek's part, the very, I quickly realized, hold on, no one is coaching this mm. because they can't even teach me how to coach it or they don't even know themselves. So I'm going to have to just figure this out. And then I got out there and I realized I was doing that more. I mean, I've got a collection of stuff. I mean, yes, I'm known for doing a lot of like BIPOC stories, but I, there's so many other accents I've done and I'm grateful for that. And even though people say, oh, but you can have your niche. I'm also like, there's so many coaches out there that can do anything. Why not? Why can't I do everything as well? You know, I'd best believe that if there are these South Asian sounds that they want, or these BIPOC, you know, Afro-Caribbean sounds, or these Middle Eastern sounds that come to so, uh, the handful of us, they will try and come to us first because they think we should know. And then they'll extend it out or they'll just ask somebody else because they, they're not aware of us. Yeah. So in terms of, did I now go into, I'd fall into this niche? I started to learn that this would be a possibility, but also that I knew very quickly that after going back into watching a lot of theatre that I wanted to help elevate South Asian um, community stories and, and that work. Do you feel like there'll be a time where you'll be like, I just want to now do the work. I don't want to just be like BIPOC related. No. No. Because certain stories have dominated our stages for 250 years. We've not had that long. Mm. And therefore, I don't feel like we're playing catch up in a weird way. But I feel like we need to like level up now. Because I've seen the actors. We know she's supporting the Tories. <laughs> we need to like level up now because I've seen them. Because that is their slogan. Because I've seen them. I'm like, You're, there's so many astonishing actors we yeah. have. And I'm like... Why not? Like this is the level of work and amazing stories, and I see like works in progress, and and I'm like, why is this not getting commissioned? This is amazing stuff. And then I like, I don't want to like talk about Tyler Perry only, but you know, he opened up his oh, production. Oh, I get what I'm saying. Yeah. But I'm just like, I remember what he was saying. He was like, I don't care what they think. I'm not making this for them. Yeah, making it and for I'm my people. Like, yeah, we need to ask like, who are we making these stories for? What the people that are commissioning, what is it that they want? And I know right now people are dying to make money, but it's the assumption of where you think the money is going to be made. Yeah. So that's an interesting larger question, which I would say um, should be like a round table. You should do a round table. <laughs> yeah, with do, who? Do a round table. Give me with, my five with, guests. With a bunch of people that are, you know. Commissioners? Anyone. <laughs> Like what, like, what is it? Like, what do we want? Because until you figure out collectively, things only happen in community. Yeah. Like, you have to have the consciousness yourself of knowing what it is I want to do and what we can do as individuals. But you need to... Have, everything happens in Sangha. Everything happens in community. I agree. So the second you get together, the power in itself... But everybody's trying to survive right now. And that is the, that is the hardest thing to get people together. That's why Sangha it's, works. The, in in I, Sangha, you can't be taken down. On I, your own, I you, agree. Can, you can fall. I agree, but it's getting people to that. You can't force people. You can't force they're people. They're ready when they're ready. Exactly. But and right now, people ready. I don't know if enough people are ready. From what I mm. have seen. Yeah. For the, uh, I'm, I'm looking at it from an organizational perspective. Yeah. I'm not looking I at it from... Keep doing what you're doing. Talk to people. Because I figure this out. The yeah. more I talk to people and say, this is how I feel, feel. other people feel safer to say, this is how I feel. Like, yeah. right, let's talk to more people that feel how we feel Handy. and believe what we believe in. Yeah. And then together, you will feel stronger and things will change. And Like, it will happen. <laughs> but, you know, there's got to be... It's like Some sort padding. Of, yeah, no, I get it. Yeah. Okay, quickly then answer the question. Uh, uh, no, actually, we've got two qu deep questions and then we're going to do quick, quick rounds, which is, um, I know you... I feel like from the conversations that I've had with you, you might not want to share a lot, which is oh. absolutely fine. But I'm intrigued to know with your Kundalini yoga yeah. practice and with your movement practice into your dialect work, what is it that makes your practice so you different from other experiences? If you could maybe touch the dip of it without going into to, your face is what, like, what the fuck? Kundalini about? yoga? No, because you have always said to me, always, I say that we've met like yeah. only twice. <laughs> but like you've said that like my, my work as a coach is not just focusing on the voice, but it's also the movement. It's bringing in yeah. my yoga practice as well. Yeah. Uh, so I'm intrigued to know what does that look like? What does that feel like? If mm. you don't want to talk about it, absolutely fine. And then the second question is the South Asian work, which we talked about. Like, what do you feel like it could uh, use? It's two big ones. Okay. Yeah. Do more of and less of. So after drama school, I was 23 and I thought, shit, I'm not going anywhere to like 
fight, stage combat, or dance every day. I need to keep active. I was never somebody that would sit by the phone. Like, I, I'm from a very working family. So I went to the local gym behind my house and I'd just go work out. And then I thought, oh crap, I need to stretch because I learned the art of stretching. Uh, you know, from all the dance teachers that the uh, art of stretching. Well, how, like everyone thinks a stretch is a quick thing, but actually to look who up, thinks so, that? Like you know, before you go to drama school, I think even like doing PE at school, like the stretches were so like yeah, five seconds. Oh, just this. Yeah, and then so I thought I need to go stretch. So I went on the timetable. It said like oh yoga, some gentle stretching. Da, da, da. Walked in and there was this lady dressed in all white with a bug <laughs> on, and I thought, what the hell is this? I thought, okay, let me just stay. Um, but the vibe that she was oozing in, in the space was very like neutral, held, quite calm. So I thought, oh, it's a good, good space. Let me just stretch. I had a traditional 19 minute yo um, Kundalini yoga set. So do you know much about Kundalini yoga? I have never done Kundalini. Okay. I've always been a vis vinyasa and ashtanga. So with the yoga, the yogic wheel, right? Hanji. You've got the, the, eight, the eight pillars, right? The eight limbs of yoga, ashtanga. Um, so the idea behind Kundalini is is that you can hit all those eight in a 90 minute session and it's all a journey and it's all based on breath, um, which a lot of yoga is all, it should all be based on yes. that anyway. And the last part um, being pranayama. Yeah, yeah. That's, well, that's one of the limbs, right? Yes. And um, so I thought, okay, let me just try it. Never heard of it before. I just thought also, why does the lady look like she's like Amritari or, you know what I mean? Like, I just thought, I just, I had this connotation because of being Sikh that, is she Sikh? Like, mm -hmm. I didn't know what Kundalini was. Yeah. And then we, we started the session, we tuned in, um, we did some breath, like some pranayam, and then um, then we did like a Kriya, and then she was explaining what asana meant and all that sort of stuff. It, I'm not going to lie, in that 90 minutes, so many th thoughts came into my, my mind, like, what is this? This is a bit weird, it's a bit odd. Oh, but there's something quite inviting here. Yeah, I just, I guess at the end of that, I, my my mind went into so many different places in that like, within that ninety minutes that by the end of it I thought oh my god don't be rude just like finish the class leave you just won't come back again and then by the time we we um, closed the session I thought I don't know what that was but it was really it was really inspiring really inviting it, it something like resonated with me so I kept going back and then before I knew it I've been I had my private practice for about ten years. And the yoga teacher kept saying to me, Sahab, like, you should do the teacher training, you should do the teacher. I was like, I don't want to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do it. And then it came to um, me wanting to learn more. And she said, the only way is teacher training. I went, okay, fine. I was going to do it in 2017. Yeah. Because I thought, oh, I'll do it. I'll be like a young mum that teaches yoga. <laughs> It'll be the, the yummy then, mummies that I call them. Yeah, and then um, I came back to London because I left London for a little bit and I sacked my agent because they weren't helpful. Got a new agent. I was like really low actually. And um, I was I thought, right, I'm just going to do the teacher training here. I'm still going to do my plan. But then I got Dishoom. No, then I got Pink Saris. Oh. I got Pink Saris, did that. It was great. And then the next year... Um, I was planning to do teach training again, then I got Dishoom and then um, I thought, okay, I'll do it the next year. And then I got Trojan Horse, but I had already started my training and they uh, were really great. They let me have a Saturday off so I could go do my exam. So I, I did it in 2018 and 2019, I'd finished. And then, of course, I did the the Masters in Voice in 2020. Whilst you were doing your yoga stuff? No, right after. Oh, right. So this is what I was saying, like something, things work out. Yeah. So my yoga training taught me so much about the the organic breath and how bhavan is the start of everything. Like hava, this air is the start of everything. We start with breath, we finish with breath. And it just taught me so much about the body and how to understand your central nervous system, um, your endocrine system, everything that you need to try and bring some sort of equilibrium to the body. So when I started doing um, voice training, I realized so much of it came from there. Mm -hmm. And actually, I had a deeper, more profound training according to the body and breath with my yoga training. So what was interesting is that in my yoga training, they I was taught by all white Europeans and some Americans. However, what I was really appreciative about 
is that because I'm really aware that so many 200 hour yoga trainings everywhere. Yeah. And um, what I was really I was about to do one. which I didn't realize though because <laughs> no. I was ignorant, right? Of what I really appreciated was that they taught from a place of center mm. and they taught they were taught through the teachings. Got it. So I never thought like, oh, I'm getting taught by a white person or oh, I'm getting taught by a European because the focus was the tra- which was the teachings and that's what it should be because it's for humans and all humans and they taught me the you know about how to be very clear because Kundalini um instructing is non-contact so you have to rely on your words you have to rely on being very clear you have to rely on holding the space so that actually you are the teacher and you are observing and holding the space for all and so so much of that comes from my own practice as a voice coach comes from that but also the language or the yogic language about the the feminine the masculine it's not gender related and it's very inclusive and we had we naturally had the the kind of the way to to instruct the sessions in a very inclusive way about how to focus on which energy without saying oh you're from like uh, that was never really um a difficulty in terms of like oh but we never address people as like oh if you're a woman do this if you're a man do that and then equally like if people came in with a wheelchair like what you can do so we worked in the space of what you can do as opposed to oh you can't do that it was very inclusive and then okay anybody that's that's uh, menstruating right now we suggest you do this so there was the language is really interesting and it was something i picked up naturally because of my yoga training so when i'm in a room coaching language doesn't scare me and precision doesn't scare me because I'd already had to do that for the Kundalini Yoga training that I went through. And then, of course, after I started learning about how frequent two hour, 200 hour yoga trainings are and actually how diluted some of those trainings were. And they doesn't talk about the whole eight limbs of yoga. And I and then now we're getting more prevalent um, content online with a lot of these authentic yoga teachers that are talking about the dilution and the bastardization of yoga training and that is what I was noticing more and more so what I would use in my voice training is to use the authentic di- undiluted stuff as opposed to just picking up what I think is helpful mm. because that's then make an assumption on the people that I'm actually coaching or teaching what's going to be helpful to them so if yeah, I just I teach the authentic form the undiluted form it will reach the person in a way it's meant to. And I shouldn't be, I'm just the vessel to give the message, the teaching of what they need to do, the discoveries within them. Mm. So I mustn't interfere, I must offer that. So I guide people in voice coaching in that way. And it's all about breath. So a lot of my focus on, on voice is breath first, because if I focus on breath, all that negative tension is going to be released. Um They'll naturally have everything available to them, their resonators, articulation, there's natural clarity in the mouth, which doesn't push for any particular sounds or accents. Yeah. So it gives the actor the actor space of real freedom and agility and flexibility as opposed to a structure of what they should sound like. The actor should know what they should sound like when it feels right. Yeah. And so that that's really informed my voice work. So it happened the right way. Oh, I'm South Asian. Less and more of, go. And then we go. Less and more of. Yeah, so. I think, less and more of. What do we need more of? South Asian stories and work? Okay. I think we need, I think we've got such great writers, such good directors. All right. Um, (laughs) I do, no, we do. We do. do. We've got immense talent. We really do, Mm -hmm. you know. And we're starting to come up in the creative sec- like scene as well. Yeah. But maybe I'm thinking, does it take South Asian, like pulling power, South Asian seed money, South Asian seats at the table to decide what gets commissioned? Because I've seen some, some great stuff where I'm like, that should have been a longer run, that should have had more money. and Or that's a great R&D or workshop. Why, why, are, we, why are we not watching that? Mm. You know? As opposed to... <laughs> Let me just say, <laughs> I have to watch a lot of theatre because of the shows I do. And work um, on a lot of stuff. But also to show support is with the people that I know as well. Yeah, yeah. And stuff. But I theatre is so expensive that if this is a field that I'm working in and I can't even afford the ticket, what are we even doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but there's some a lot of stuff I've seen where I'm like, that shit. Like, why did you get the money for that? And then I have to ask myself, who thought that was worth more than X, Y, Z? Mm. you know so yeah it's, it is getting political but i think we're living in an age where you it can't not be political anymore yeah these choices because they're all deliberate choices 
And I get that, you know, people, we're dying to make money in the field and in the sector, but it, I think it's going to take a lot of, like, courage, sangat community, allyship, yeah. real allyship, where allies not even call themselves allies, they just see themselves as being human, to really uh, believe in, in some of our work. Yeah. And putting enough time into workshopping or R&Ding some of our ideas because sometimes it's not that something wasn't great I realized I was like it just needed more time to flesh out you know rather than having the constraints of like you can only have so and so R&D sessions or workshop sessions or or something you know um but I feel like it's time to to come together um it's time to and I think that the call for that in general is there anyway you know, coming together as like one human race, but in particular for South Asian Asian theatre, I I feel like there's there's still a space to go. Yeah. Because I work in on a plethora of projects. I'm really lucky, really lucky that the only work I don't do is is that field. Therefore, I've got I feel like I've got a really good barometer and and, and sense of what's out there, and I can see like where that is. You're in the crux of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and in terms of like accent stuff, like yeah, our, our sounds need to be better, which is why some people are directly contacted me now because they know I'm passionate about getting our sounds right. Um, so I, that people don't have that moment that I had, which was like a really weird Dave Chappelle moment where I realised the scene's funny, but they're not laughing at the scene, they're laughing at the accent. Yeah. They're laughing at our sounds. <laughs> yeah, like I, I had that and that's what made me go, no, I don't like this. I don't want to be the... And, I, and yeah, I don't want I don't want us to be the expense anymore. You know, the scene's funny. That's good enough. But we don't need to laugh at the sound because you're literally laughing at, at a collective. But I do feel like there's space to be elevated. And I think we've got the capacity for it. I think we've got immense talent. We really do. In terms of how and when we'll get there and how we'll get there, I'm not sure. But I know that there's a way. I just don't know what it is yet. Yeah. Yeah, and with the accent stuff, my rule of thumb is, I know a lot of actors are so fed up of doing certain accents, like, why do I have to do an accent? Like, if it's serving the story, if it's serving an authenticity, great, do it. But if you're going to do it, do it right. Otherwise, why not just use your own accents, your own natural accents, and just focus on the story? Therefore, don't do any accents. So you either yeah. do them justice or don't do them at all. Because I will still work either way. Like, I can still help you how to be that fuller version of your authentic sound, but telling the story. And sure. we can still do that. Yeah. You know, we don't have to do accents if there's not a want to. I find that in self-tapes in the first process quite a lot. Like, I feel like there should be an encouragement now more of do it in your own accents. Do then. they not? Not a lot of the times, no. I feel like a lot of the self-tapes now say own accent. And then sometimes they like, say and, 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 <laughs> and. but that Which and means... is like a n d, like yeah. capital and. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I wonder if that's to do with hearing it if it needs to have an accent. Yeah. But then also like, oh, how close or far was that person from the actual accent? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Does that make sense? I get it. I get yeah. it. Yeah. This is going to be the game section. We're going to start off with rapid responses to some maybe maybe okay. deep questions, but try and do it rapidly. Okay, All right. A tip on being financially savvy that you have learned throughout your experience in the industry that you would like to impart on someone. If you don't need it, don't buy it. Nice. Um, a tip of sustainability, especially as a freelancer, that you have learned about your craft. Oh, cold reading every day nice pick anything up now you've got the internet at your fingertips but there's nothing that changes there's something that happens to the brain cerebrally um when you look at text on your phone if you're doing random article searching yeah or when you pick up like a random paper text so even if you've got like random work like a, the, like an old jane air or like a random shakespeare like anything pick it up and just do random comedy for 10 minutes a day do you do it yeah you but no, no, like at the moment not so much because it's <laughs> early starts and there's so much text but yeah if i'm having like more of easy easier period where yeah. like maybe just one session a day or something yeah i will because yeah it Why just not? keeps yeah okay cool because then it makes easier to when you're in a space and it's a new situation the the central nervous system like your nervous system gets used to it mm. like i had to read off a screen to the um, masters of voice students at central this morning and i didn't plan to do it but it was so far away from them, I thought oh, I was going to read it. And I cold read it. But I think that would have been tricky, especially as someone that's dyslexic and dyspraxic. If I wasn't used to doing 
Always. Excellent. And it's in, I keep saying this, performing, acting is an art. We are athletes. If you don't train or practice every day a little bit, uh, you sometimes will feel a bit cold. Yeah. So like 10 minutes is a huge difference. I agree. It's like a muscle yeah. memory thing. Yeah. Um, if you went back to any role or project, what would it be and why if, throughout the plethora of work that you have done? And if you were asked to do a part two slash expansion of it, what would it be? What, as an actor? Or whatever. You take it however you want to. As an actor, I would go back to Pink Sorry Revolution. Okay, great. Why? It was an empowering, important story, yeah. but it was the first time I really felt empowered and- Important. <laughs> and no, empowered <laughs> and supported and celebrated yeah. um, amongst other South Asian female contemporaries. Nice, and what would the expansion of it be for you, for your oh. role in it? Oh, my role. Oh my God, I haven't even thought about that. Well, no, you have to. I'd have more scenes. Okay. <laughs> I'd uh, have more scenes, yeah. A great thing about being an artist in today's social, culture, and economic climate and a challenging thing about it. The great thing is, as artists and actors especially, you have more advocacy in the space now. You have, to, however, no one's a mind reader. You've got to ask for what you need, even though maybe a production should have thought about something beforehand. Ask for what you need. There's an empowerment there. And what was the other part of it? You just a challenging to... thing. A challenging thing is when things have been put in place that are tricky, try to find the right word and time and person to talk to about it so that things can actually change. Mm. I think you would like, oh, uh, uh, getting into the role, a tip, um, whether you auditioning or on the job. Getting into a role, figure out what kind of person you are, what kind of actor you are. Some people look at a piece of prop some people look at a piece of clothing or jewelry some people have a particular line that they really resonate with that they have to actually speak mm. yeah do those okay cool um i think you would like someone to take away with them either having met you for a brief second or known you your entire lifetime that i'm trying to be helpful nice that's you're, it you're... just know i'm trying to help that's it yeah sorry to interrupt <laughs> your favorite thing about yourself either as a creative or just as a person and something you feel is a challenge and are working on the thing i love about myself which i think when you're growing up is made, might have made, 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 made many people might have uh, relate to this is that it's there's a an openness and honesty and a directness and um it's so funny so we were talking that's about the this yeah yeah, yeah that's but, the but was, in us. this direct thing right it came up before with um one of my favourite directors, Daniel Bailey, he was like, when people say that they're direct, but they actually can't take directness. Yeah. I'm someone that appreciates it. So bless believe I'm direct, because if you're direct with me, I'm very clear on what you need from me. Mm. Um, so I'm very um, open and direct. And if I don't know something, I will ask a very direct question so that I'm then more informed. Yeah. But I sometimes I do accept that it can be taken as very, like, it's, it's very bold, but I'm, I can't, I can be gentle, and I can be considerate. However, it's not my job to manage how other someone will respond to me. So I can see how that might be a little difficult to to take in to take in from someone that's not used to such directness. But I actually appreciate that about myself. I can see where it, it can be a bit of a, a tricky thing for for other people. Nice. Okay. Yeah, cool. but it's harder to be something. These are meant you're to be not... rapid. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I was like, it's not very inclusive with this neurodivergent of thinking. Uh, uh, hello, neurodiverse yeah. as well. That's why. Um, do you want to say anything more about that? Or no, we, we, sure, you sure, you sure, you sure? Yeah, sure? yeah I'm sure. <laughs> I think you would like to impart on somebody, but you never got told. You only live once. You only live every moment once. Bloody. Take that damn holiday, go to that wedding. Um, go to that whatever it is that's important to you that's yeah. part of your life don't live sliding doors like live your life bloody hell there's so many titles of episode here <laughs> nice um words you would say to your mirror self if you looked in the mirror right now words of wisdom you would say in the mirror you can't hold say on it. to your grace hold on to your i can't grace. see my face though <laughs> Go and say it then. Lean in. Hold on to your grace. <laughs> Three things about the creative culture that could do with or without. It could do with more allies. Nice. It could do without less old gods. And third thing, it could do with more money government. <laughs> nice. Three artists' work who you really admire or their journey and would suggest in checking out their work. Um, oh, artists. Artists or, yeah. I am a huge fan of Bush Theatre. I've done so many, so many shows that I know, but I honestly believe 
people make places the places don't make the people people make the places and bush theater are really doing what do always do what they set out to do which is continue to tell a diverse range of unrepresented stories and voices and they really consider each production as an entity in itself really unique really value whoever comes in the building Everyone is so kind and friendly to each other, down to the front of house team, the people, the box office, the, the finance office upstairs, the administrative team, the production team, the producers, everyone, the crew. And also they, they do what they can to help other global causes. So I'm a huge fan of, of Bush Theatre. It's my favourite theatre. I can uh -huh. say that now, actually. Is that two? That's one. one. The Bush Theatre is one entity. Okay, okay, one. G give me an artist or another organisation or something. An artist, an artist. An artist. An artist. <laughs> Do a... Oh my God. An artist. <laughs> Tell d me. D d d d Dear Lord. There's just so many. That doesn't mean that the others are shit. It just means that these are the three I, that... Do you know what I've realised? You've made me realise how lucky and fortunate I've been. How fortunate I've been in. I know, sorry, these are not rapid. I just think there's amazing, amazing actors out there. I'm not going to. Well, apparently do this. not. If I'm you not haven't gonna... worked with the Bush or are not the Bush, you're not in the top there's three like, people. Honestly, there's like a stream. Like, oh, I think Mini Bart is exciting. The first time I had like this, like, burst of like okay. excitement <laughs> I know it was when I walked into the first day of Chasing Hairs and you know she really went out of her way and her team to ensure that the room was so inclusive so responsive I'd never seen so many brown people in one space yeah. that's when I discovered like oh my god we have a brown lighting designer oh my god we have like brown sign designers oh my god I and it was just immense talent in the room I felt so like warm and I felt so excited and I'd never felt that before and lung theatre. Okay. Because lung okay, theatre, the they could choose to do any other work. They've got so many great connections. They choose to serve these hidden communities or these hidden stories. And they really, um, they're about the work. It's yeah. storytelling. It's truthful. It's inclusive. They've got another show coming out soon, which is about um, the care system. And it's a musical, which is really exciting. But the, the, yeah, lung theatre, they, they, they're they like... Another company I would say are truly allies. Yeah, you're like, quick, 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 quick. Yeah. Jelena. Yeah. Okay, great. Cool. Make these rapid. If you were a movie, what would the original title of that movie be? First thing that comes into your head. Turende. <laughs> if you would give me the long line that would go on IMDb. An upfront, brisk, funny, warm hearted, loving comedy. Okay, great. <laughs> give me three actors that would star in it. Oh my God. Um, Raj Bajaj, Simon Rivers. We need actor. <laughs> okay, nice. <laughs> Tell him to respond to my fucking messages. Okay. <laughs> um, Can I do a female version as well? No, that's it. What? Sorry, what did you say? I want you to do a female version. I just did the men first. I thought I'd do female it's, too. It's your, it's your... Okay, and then the other version would be, um, I have to say this, like, Goldie Note, Sarita Kumar, Sharon Full, and Uri Krishnamurti. That's four. Okay, great. Um, if you were a drink, what would you be? A gin and tonic. Food. Sushi. If you were a fruit. Mango. Dessert. <gasps> Chocolate gelato. <laughs> Colour. Brown. Clothing item. Uh, a hat. Flo flower, so that. flower and plant in which type? Jade plant. And what would you rather, cookies or cake? Cookies. Rich or fame? Rich. <laughs> win lots of award or win an unlimited amount of cash? Say that again. Win lots of awards. Or have an unlimited amount of bank balance like cash. Can't do shit with the words. I'll take the, the money. Fairy tales or mythological stories or real life stories? Ooh, it's like sometimes fantasy, real life stories. World peace or equality? Oh my god, equality. Nice. Then you'll have world peace. Yeah. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Raving up at home or chilling at home? Sorry. Raving up out, well, I just say raving oh, up well, out. You, you can... Ra <laughs> raving up out aside or chilling at home? Chilling at home. Uh, improv or scripted? Improv. Fancy holidays or fancy flights? 
fancy holidays. Nice. Okay, well, that is all the time that we have. We were going to play another improv game, but we don't have time. So we're going to do these last two questions really quick. Okay. Uh, segment four, opposites attract. So everybody loves a rant. You love a rant. I love a rant. We love to have a rant yeah. today. So we're going to rant about something. Okay. AKA you. You're going to rant about something for okay. 30 seconds. Okay, 30 seconds max. Okay. However, you must start or end your rant with what the chai. This is Gurkir and Kaur. What the chai. What the chai? What the chai? Tax. Like, we should get more of a say where the tax is going and just voting is not enough because you don't actually get to say this percentage I want to go here, this percentage I want to go there. I just feel like I'm paying so much tax and if I'm not happy with the services I'm getting, which is, say, for example, the NHS, and they're doing the best they can because their hands are tied, but then people are now forced to go privately because they need to get seen quicker because they're slowly... Um, getting more and more in pain and more and more uh, sick. Um, what are they gonna do? Not the time. <laughs> nice. Not the time. And we're gonna combat that with another oh question, God. which is I. I am really into joyfulness and being yeah. joyful myself, finding that joyfulness for myself and bringing joyfulness to other people. Mm. So I would like to ask you that question, which is what is one thing that makes you feel joyful, and what is one thing you do for others that makes them feel joyful? Oh, uh, what makes me feel joyful? Yeah. Is some me time, nice. some fam family time, and some friends time, and some creative time. Because life is tough sometimes. And she linked in for that. Huh? Life is tough sometimes. <laughs> life is tough sometimes. <laughs> you don't need to look for how tough life is. It just comes to you. Yeah. So you don't need to find where the misery is. But in the misery, you will find joy. So funny, because I'm talking about this with another friend who's finding it on her project at the moment. And... By holding on to the joy, the misery will never win. Nice. And she said that as well. And I was like, that always stayed with me. And in order to continue to hope, you need that joy. You need the polarity in order to, to really withstand anything that's going to be the polar opposite of what joy can be. And the joy to give to other people is like, if you've left them feeling better. And in fact, even if you've left them, they don't feel worse. That's the plus. The worst thing you can do to someone is let them feel worse than what they are. I feel you just got to listen. Let people speak. Sometimes people just need to speak or say something or sound it. And then just by you holding it without response, which just seems pretty obvious, but something happens because you're also taking on that energy and you're allowing it to respond. Yeah, you do something to validate it. I'm like, that's beautiful. I can't believe you said that. There's so many people I talk to. I'm like, I would never have been able to do that at your age. Like, you should be really proud of yourself. Like, yeah. I was so, like, not there. Yeah. And so allowing people to actually, if you mirror back to them, like, how how much they're flourishing in their way, they have a reminder of who they are and they appreciate themselves a bit more. Well, everyone, that brings us to the end of the episode. I hope you enjoyed that. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you never miss out and don't forget to rate and comment on whichever platform you're listening to this episode on. You can also become a patron and a supporter of the show by subscribing for as small as five pounds or as I love saying, $5.50 on Patreon. I will put the information of the artist on the episode and any of the links in the description of this episode, so make sure to check that out. But as of now, I will leave you as I always do. Breathe in and breathe out. <sighs> now I must go, which means now I must go. That is copyrighted and I will sue. <laughs> Until next time, stay curious. <laughs>